I started driving home on Bay Avenue. I mean, we had water up past that bulkhead, um, about a foot over that, so almost four feet in the road. Uh, this beach right here was uh, a third the length it is now. As you can see, the dock got pretty much taken apart, and then we had water in here around this this height, so half foot in the first floor. Uh, yeah. We have friends who say your restaurant's great. How bad was it, the storm? Everything's destroyed. All the rest of the, the kitchen's destroyed. The kitchen's destroyed? Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. All the equipment, yeah. There's two women, one upstairs, one downstairs. They had to completely get out of there. Everything. All their belongings. Sure. I don't know if they're going to condemn it, but the whole heating system has to be redone. Floorboards replaced, carpeting, if it is going to still stand. You don't know until they come in and assess it. A place could look completely normal like this home, and FEMA could come in and say, nope, damage is too bad. Sad. Yeah. Can you imagine? Yes. And, and we know she put a lot of money into her kitchen. She just remodeled her kitchen. Oh, boy. She's very fastidious with her home. She's always out there doing work in her, in her garden and landscaping. Yeah, very sad. This is the house that's been condemned. It's shifted. What's your name? I'm Patty. Patty, I have a feeling you're the kind of person who's going to rebound. I'm back. <laughs> That's what we do, right? Yeah. We're human. Hopefully, you can't lay down and die. You got to keep on keeping on, keep on trucking. <laughs> Good luck, Patty. Thanks, John. These people had a couple inches of water in their house. When you see all that kind of stuff, you know the people had to empty their bottom floor. I just said, I'm glad my mother doesn't, isn't alive to see this, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Good luck to you. you too. Did water get into this street? Not in my house, thank so you So you're God. very, very lucky. But everything oh. I store, I store in the garage. So it's three feet in the garage of us. Oh, I'm so, so sorry. Hey, hey, it didn't get in my house, that's all that matters. We're blessed. See my little sign over there? I'll go check it check out. It. What's your name? I'm Kathy Ferrier. Kathy John Thornton, nice to meet you. John, You're nice gonna to meet be you. on YouTube at some point. Get out! Be thankful. Good advice. You get rid of wet insulation? Yeah. Yeah, it was nice. Like Can I get your phone number? Uh sure. Very yeah. nice to meet you. Aren't so they awesome guys? Yes. Very proud. It's not a job that would be easy to do. Stay warm, you guys. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. You're Kathy's daughter? Jen Ferrier. How long did it take them to do that? Uh, three hours. Three guys. And I was helping him, my brother. You were under there? No, I was bagging up all the wet insulation. Thousands of dollars right there that I spent to insulate the house when I bought it. Did you guys get water in your house? Oh, yeah. Two feet. Uh, then what do you have to do? Uh, we ripped out the carpets and we've been pulling off the baseboards and I have a brand new kitchen, so I'm uh, guessing all that's going to have to get ripped out. I'm so sorry. Thanks. <laughs> like, from the outside, I think most of the houses look pretty good, and then you go in, and it's just devastation. Water, dirt, mud. And the truth of her words became so painfully clear over the next weeks as the contents of numberless homes were disgorged upon Ocean City's sidewalks.
a serve pro guy? Correct. What have you been seeing? We've been seeing wet crawl spaces, certainly. Storm water up anywhere up to 17, 18 inches inside homes, which we're going in and taking out wet materials. Anywhere up to four feet, depending on the damage that we find. You can go down a street and see houses that appear to be unaffected, and then bang, you see houses that are buried in sand and water. Are you from the area? Or? North Carolina. Oh! <laughs> How long do you guys think you're going to be around? We're told that we'll be home for Thanksgiving, but chances are we'll be turned around coming right back up. So. Well, thanks for your work. You know, we're happy to be here. But it wasn't just human beings and their property that was affected by this storm. This rebuilding of the dunes, is that a one-day process or it'll take several or weeks? Well, let's just say it this way. If you were looking at the dunes, they'd be about 30 feet in the air. So doing that by even heavy equipment is going to take a long time, Dave. They put up a blockade of sand for the Northeaster that came in after Sandy. This is what's called the bulkhead wall. As you can see, it has 14 to 18 inch diameter piers on either side. So this wall was built to withstand everything that comes across. These rocks were what to break the water up before it came over the bulkhead. Then in 2001, they built dunes. That Corps of Engineers survey marker was to be the center of the dunes all the way down. When these dunes were built in 2001, they put up every six feet these little poles, pounded them in the ground, and then tied hemlock trees to them. And then they built the sand and the hemlock trees were to keep the dunes together. But the ocean was so fierce that it took them away. Is this the beginning of the rebuilding of the dunes? It was a temporary thing to, uh, for the Nor'easter when it came to. There's wire, there's concrete blocks, there's you name it. It's, I mean, this is what, if these were permanent, this is what you'd be stepping on all summer long when you're playing in the beach. So this all has to come back off the beach. Oh, they're going to remove all the sand, and then the how sand. are they going to get the dunes back? It's my understanding they'll sift it through and then start to rebuild the dunes. And will that be done by when? Five years from now. So what happens when the next storm hits? We pray. We pray. Ocean City is a barrier island. At its southern tip is Corson's Inlet State Park. And as Nancy and I walked down there, we saw the awful path of destruction that Sandy laid across the natural environment. guys couldn't talk to me but they said that uh, the island really is kind of at risk. There's nothing really protecting it. And he said if you go to the other side, they're pushing dirt like crazy trying to get something going. So that's where the old pier was that people would launch their boats and apparently it washed up because here it is and they, these guys said this is exactly where it was. The truth is that on the northern and southern ends of Ocean City, our dunes are just in horrible condition. Hello, my name is uh, Jim Newsom. I live in Cherry Hill and I work in Philadelphia. I work with the Environmental Protection Agency. I'm down here at our shore place on the south end of Ocean City where we really got a lot of sand and debris thrown around and we did have damage to our home. I think what this means to me is that you never can know what Mother Nature can do to you. In our particular place right here, the eye of the storm went over, but we were fortunate that it was two hours earlier than was expected. And had it been two hours later, it would have coincided with a lunar high tide. And in that case, we would have had two to three more feet of water here, and it would have gotten into virtually every house. Along our street and our alley here, 
very few homes had it in the house. There was damage underneath the insulation and things like that. But we've been very, very fortunate, and there's others in town and definitely people up north of us that got it much worse. Jim, is this just the beginning of nightmares to come? It's hard to tell. You don't know what is a natural cycle of nature and, and of weather. I do believe myself that some of this is contributed to by global warming, which has caused sea rise to come up here probably about six inches in the last decade or so. Who really knows what's going to happen, but certainly it accentuates it. Yeah, I don't know that you could blame it all on global warming, but it certainly makes it worse. How was your house? Not too bad. Is that what they call the breakaway walls? Did yes. It, yes. So yes. That, that helped you quite a bit? It's designed to let the water yeah. flow through if the water gets up the side. Yeah, so you got to replace some of it, but it doesn't really do that much damage. Well, I wish our house was up that high. <laughs> Where were you? Back on the uh, bay side on Dory Drive. These houses that are built up on stilts are the subject of my intense envy. FEMA has recently characterized our house as in a flood zone that may have high velocity waves, which could knock it off its foundation. Our neighbor Al, from right across the street, stayed during Sandy and described what it was like for our block. I was sitting in the den in my chair the night of the highest tide, which was Monday night of the storm and I was watching the water, and you could tell the moment the surge hit this area. That surge came from the north end, from the wetlands up in the north end, and it flowed down Dory Drive here like I had never seen water flow. It was fast, it was deep. The water came up to the top support on my neighbor's fence. That's how much water was flowing through here. And the water was moving so fast that there's no way you wanted to be standing out in that street. You would have been swept. That's how fast. And that occurred an hour and a half to two hours prior to the high tide. So we still had to sweat the rise of the tide. And fortunately, the winds changed as they predicted the winds would change for us. And when those winds swung and they started counterclockwise flow around the center of the storm, it just blew this water out of here as quickly as it came in. It was incredible. And the water went back in the exact same direction that it came from. Very little water moved down the street, either in or out from this end of Dory Drive. Everything happened from that north end. This was all water across here. And again, it was as, at the height of that neighbor's fence. So that was a lot of water. Two months after the storm, I sat down with Ocean City Patch editor Doug Bergen and asked him some questions. What lessons has Sandy taught us? I think the biggest lesson we learned is that it can happen here. I'm personally guilty of being one who thought it couldn't. Over the years, I've looked at storm tracks and they always seem to curve off into the ocean or maybe crash into the Carolinas. but. Sandy took that sharp left turn, and it did happen here. And I don't think anybody's ever going to forget that. Doug, can you tell me about the dunes in Ocean City, where they held and, and why, and where they didn't and why? I think the dunes at the north and south ends were wiped out completely. And that's why you saw the devastation that you did in the streets behind the dunes. But in the heart of the island, where the dunes are widest and healthiest, they protected the homes and beach and streets behind them. But if you go down to the beach, you can see how much of those dunes were sacrificed. A lot of them were just flattened. So if you look at them from the street, it looks as if they were untouched. But if you walk down to the beach, you can see two-thirds of their width is gone or flattened in some fashion. I understand there's funding to replenish the dunes at the north end, but how about us here in the south end? I do know the area between 36th Street and 59th Street is on a list of approved projects from the Army Corps, and it has been for some time, just awaiting funding from Congress. As uh, everyone knows, Congress is about to approve billions in disaster relief, and a good portion of that will be for preventing future disasters. I can't predict the whims of Congress, but I think if any time is going to happen, it's going to be now. Can you tell me about 
FEMA's new flood map. Homes that will be substantially rebuilt or new homes will be required to have living spaces at higher elevations based on a new map that's out there. Flood insurance policies apparently have what's called an ICC, Increased Cost of Compliance Clause, that theoretically can pay up to $30,000 of the cost of lifting a home. I don't know the nuances and details of how practical or feasible collecting on an ICC claim would be. But that's all the questions that are being asked by everybody now, and I think that'll shake out what the realities and the myths are as the days go forward. Can Patch publish a list of resources to help people who are still struggling figure out what to do? That's really a great idea, and there's so many unanswered questions, you know, from insurance to building guidelines to just practical questions about mold remediation. That's something we can and should work on. Will Ocean City be ready for the summer tourist season? Ocean City will absolutely be open, and I think it'll be surprising to some folks who are not here how well the island has recovered. The dunes obviously have taken a a large hit, but I think the beaches, ironically, even today, are fairly wide. A lot of that dune sand, I think, has been redistributed. So while we're in a precarious position for future storms right now, enjoying the summer on the beach, I think that'll be unchanged. How's the Ocean City business community doing? Certainly the downtown was hit very hard, all of them affected by flood damage. At the worst time of year, coming into the holiday season. But again, that was inspiring to watch how quickly they did remediate and rebuild and reopen. So I would say the vast, vast, vast majority is open for business right now. And for the folks who might be planning to come to first night over New Year's Eve, I think they'll be pleasantly surprised to see most of the town is open. Hi, I love shopping in Ocean City. Everyone is so friendly and make you feel so welcome. It's the only place to shop. Lisa, so you're back in business? We are, but we're closing after the second to renovate post Sandy. But everything kind of was okay? We had a very good season. People were driving from Haddonfield, Westchester to come support downtown Ocean City, so it was great. It was good. Uh, Very gratifying, very nice to be supported. While working on this film, the people I talked to were incredibly brave and resilient. I think sometimes the worst of times brings out the best in people. And in Ocean City, the city itself, the churches, the business community, the residents, the second homeowners, the visitors, have all come together in an amazing sort of way. They all share a love for Ocean City and to watch the spirit of volunteerism and the resolve to rebuild has been nothing short of inspiring. It's really, really a special place. Sandy was a drag, there's no question about it, but I sure did meet some wonderful people in its wake. I can't believe it, you're reopened. What happened? Yeah, well, we we just got busy. We rolled up our sleeves and cleaned and cleaned and cleaned and we had to replace everything in the kitchen, but luckily we got it done pretty quickly. We have friends who uh, helped us out a lot. Friend who's a plumber, friend who's an electrician, a friend who has a restaurant equipment business. But we're here and everybody seems to be happy that we're here, so that's what it's all about. It is so inspiring to see you back in business. Thank you. And your crocodile, he's inside now. (laughs) Yeah, he weathered the storm pretty well, Lyle the crocodile there, yeah. Everything did, I mean we did did pretty well. It just took a lot of uh, elbow grease, a lot of soap and water. And bleach, like everybody. How has the uh, storm impacted your view of human nature? I think I have a renewed um, love of (laughs) my fellow human beings. (laughs) I'm so humbled by by how many people came out. People that don't even know, they don't even know these people that they're helping. I mean, how selfless and wonderful is that? So, God is good. I was out shooting some B-roll last night when all of a sudden someone called out my name from a car window. Wendy, all your predictions came true. Because are we going to be ruined? I think Clipper, we're going to be okay. 
have and you're on Dory, yes. Yeah. yeah. I don't think the pier will be here when we're finished. You care to comment on your predictive abilities? I'm thinking that Mother Nature and I must be very closely related, John, that's all I can tell you. <laughs> Happy New Happy Year. New Hi, Carrie. Happy New Year to both of you guys. Well. Don't get hit by a car, John. Bye. They say that if you're born to hang, you'll never drown. And if you're born to drown, you probably aren't going to get run over by a car. We are drawn to the ocean like moths to the flame. We can't help ourselves. Its beauty and mystery seduce us entirely. For the past several years, I have gone for a brief plunge into the ocean on January 1st. The bitterness of the cold water causes the inside of my body to burn. I don't know why I am so compelled to do this, but I am. We in Ocean City live here in full knowledge of what may happen to us. Our homes may someday be swallowed by the sea, and yet we stay. Kind of crazy, perhaps, but that's what love will do to you. Today I plan to sleep on the street And my heart fell at your feet I can't help it if I'm still in love Somebody else stood by your side And he looked so satisfied I can't help it if I'm still in love with you A picture from the past keeps slowly stealing As I brushed your arm and walk so close to you Then suddenly I got that old time feeling I can't